Cuba photography, focus on compact cameras. The materials that are available uh, discuss basics of scuba photography and also delve into image capture and focusing, light metering and exposure compensation, shutter speed, aperture and its relationship to depth of field and bokeh, ISO, color and white balance, camera modes such as automatic, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual. It will also discuss strobes and strobe positioning and will focus in detail on the CNC YS D2 strobe. It will also present information regarding the optimal settings for mid-range, macro, and wide-angle photography and also will provide examples whereby shutter speed priority or aperture priority are useful. Scuba photography. The art of underwater photography is complex because it requires not only photographic skills but scuba skills as well. Moreover, most sea creatures do not pose but rather move and not only in the horizontal plane but also in the vertical plane. Capturing underwater color is problematic because water blocks color transmission differentially depending upon color wavelength and energy. Further complicating this endeavor is the fact that the gear must be in watertight cases resistant to water pressure at depth and is cumbersome to varying degrees. Basic Scuba Photography The first group of slides focuses on basic aspects of underwater photography without the use of strobes. Subsequently, underwater photography utilizing strobes will be discussed. In addition, macro or close-up photography and wide-angle photography will be considered. Basic scuba photography, shutter speed. A good picture requires the subject to be in focus. One aspect of proper focus is for the camera to take the picture fast enough so that the subject does not move appreciably during the time the camera opens and then closes the shutter. The interval between opening and closing of the camera shutter is determined by shutter speed, usually expressed in fractions of a second. Shutter speed should be as fast as or faster than 1 60th of a second for scuba photography since most fish do not move at high speed. Basic scuba photography, aperture. Another aspect of obtaining a focused picture is capturing the image at the distance from the camera where the subject will be in the lens's focal range. The distance over which an image will be in focus is termed the depth of field. Depth of field is determined by the lens's focal length and the size of the lens diaphragm opening set by the camera's aperture f-stop. Depth of field increases with increasing f-stop setting. Aperture f-stop should be f8 or higher for scuba photography. Basic scuba photography, capturing light and color. When the aperture opening is reduced by increasing f-stop, depth of field increases, which helps to keep moving subjects fish in focus. Unfortunately, smaller apertures are associated with less light passing through the camera lens, resulting in darker images. So, does one have to choose between a focused but too dark image versus an adequately illuminated but unfocused image? Not necessarily, since there are several ways to restore brightness and color to images that are coming out too dark. Basic scuba photography, ISO. A camera's ISO value sets its sensitivity to light, and therefore ISO is an additional variable influencing exposure, in addition to shutter speed and aperture. Therefore, when images are coming out too dark, increasing the ISO value will brighten them up. While increasing ISO increases sensitivity to light and also allows capture of faster movement, there is no free lunch as this comes with more noise in the image, that is, the image may be less sharp. For scuba photography, ISO 100 is a good starting point. Basic scuba photography, EV compensation. Assume the following settings. Shutter speed 1 60th of a second, f stop of f8, and ISO 100. If images are coming out too dark, as a first step, try to get closer to the subject since water blocks light and color. 
There is another camera setting, however, that it may help to augment brightness, and this is exposure value compensation. Setting EV compensation to higher positive numbers brightens images, while setting EV to negative values darkens them. Basic scuba photography. Further considerations. When images are coming out too dark, the camera and its housing may dictate which settings are the easiest to adjust. For example, images can be brightened by increasing ISO, by reducing f-stop number, or by positive exposure compensation. Increasing ISO from 100 to 200 increases camera sensitivity to light, albeit with more noise. Reducing f-stop from 8 to 6.3 increases light by increasing aperture opening, albeit with reduced depth of field. And finally, choosing a positive EB compensation number will also brighten the images. Image capture. A digital camera captures an image when it is exposed to the light being reflected from the subject. Assuming the subject is properly focused, the quality of the captured image is influenced by how much light is received by the image sensor, for how long, and how sensitive the image sensor is to the light received through the lens, or TTO. A camera controls the latter three factors by settings for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, respectively. The camera then calculates the appropriate exposure based on light metering algorithms. Image focusing. An image is focused by sensors in the camera. Most cameras allow the operator to choose the number of sensors used to focus an image. For example, the Nikon D800 allows use of 1, 9, 21, or 51 sensors for focusing, as illustrated below. How many camera sensors are selected for focusing depends on how much of the scene is composed by the primary subject. In other words, is this a burden flight or is it a broader landscape? Light metering types. A camera calculates exposure based upon one of three light metering methods, multi-segment, center-weighted, or spot. Multi-segment metering. Multi-segment metering reads light information from five different areas that cover the majority of the scene and then produces an average reading of the segments. Some multi-segment meters evaluate the five segments but alter the average by giving information from the center of the scene more weight, usually 60% for the center and the remaining 40% for the other regions. Center weighted metering. In center weighted metering, the camera meters only the light reaching the area at the center of the scene. Many cameras have markings on the viewfinder that show a large circle around the center of the viewfinder. This provides a visual cue to those employing a zoom lens. Spot metering. In spot metering, the camera meters only the light reflected from the very center of the subject. This type of metering is useful for photographing birds in flight. Many digital cameras will allow the operator to move the metering spot to locations other than the center of the frame. Exposure compensation. Most digital cameras have exposure value or EV compensation settings, which are sometimes needed when a camera incorrectly calculates how much exposure is needed for a photo, resulting in an image that is either too dark or too bright. Selecting positive EV settings will make photos brighter, while negative values will darken photos. The method of exposure bracketing is a way to deal with this issue by taking a series of shots utilizing varying EV offsets. For example, five shots might be taken with EVs of minus 0.7, minus 0.3, 0, plus 0.3, and plus 0.7 to cover the range of possible outcomes in terms of lightness or darkness. Shutter speed. An image is captured by a camera when the imaging medium is exposed to the light reflected from a subject. The shutter speed controls the duration of the exposure. Slow shutter speeds provide a lot of light to image a subject, but cause image blur when subjects are moving. Fast shutter speeds attempt to freeze motion, but reduce the amount of light and can darken images. 
Shutter speed settings. For scuba photography, a camera with one or two synchronized strobes or flash units provides the best results since strobes allow use of relatively fast shutter speeds to freeze motion. A shutter speed of 1 60th of a second is a good starting point in this regard since most fish do not swim at high speed. Higher shutter speeds, 1 100th or 1 250th of a second, may provide better results as long as adequate strobe lighting is available. For macro photography, faster shutter speeds up to 1 250th of a second can be used since the strobe will be close to the subject and provide adequate lighting. Aperture. The camera's aperture is another parameter that regulates how much of the subject's light makes its way to the image sensor. This function is analogous to the iris in one's eye. The way a camera controls the aperture is through a series of sliding plates which create an adjustable diaphragm that determines the size of the opening that light passes through. The diaphragm can open widely to allow a lot of light from the image to reach the sensor or can close down to a very small opening to limit light and reduce brightness of an image. Aperture and f-stops. This depiction of aperture opening in relationship to the f-stop shows that it is an inverse relationship. On the top left, one can see what would be your pupil in a dark room, very widely dilated. Now, this is uh, associated with an f-stop of 1.4. However, at the bottom right, if one were to go out in bright sunlight, your pupil would constrict down to a smaller size to limit the amount of brightness getting into your eye. Uh, in this case, uh, the f-stop of AF22 illustrates this phenomenon. Aperture and f-stop. A camera lens aperture is set by choosing on the camera what is known as the f-stop number. The range of f-stops a camera can use is determined primarily by the design of the lens and the lens's focal length. A low f-stop number provides a large lens opening, while increasingly larger f-stop numbers provide increasingly smaller lens openings. The aperture setting also determines the image depth of field, which refers to how much of the image will be in focus. Aperture and f-stop determinants. In optics, f-stop is the ratio of the lens focal length to the diameter of the lens opening and is therefore dimensionless. For each increasing step of f-stop, the camera receives half as much light as the lower f-stop number. So, if a low f-stop number provides a large lens opening and a large amount of light from the image, why aren't low f-stops used for all photography? The primary reason is that aperture also determines an image's depth of field, that is, how much of the subject will be in focus. Depth of field. How much of an image is in focus is its depth of field. Higher f-stop numbers provide greater depth of field. It should be remembered that higher f-stop numbers are associated with smaller lens diaphragm openings. The reason why a higher f-stop number and its smaller lens diaphragm opening provides a greater depth of field is that less light coming from different angles can pass through a smaller aperture. Depiction of depth of field. The diagram below shows the relationship between f-stop and depth of field is an inverse relationship. On the left, the f-stop of 1.8 has a very narrow depth of field, whereas the smaller aperture f-stop f16 has a greater depth of field. ISO value. The term ISO refers to a standard measurement of a film's or an electronic imager's sensitivity to light promulgated by the International Standardization Organization, hence ISO. Since a camera's ISO value sets its sensitivity to light, it is another variable that influences image exposure in addition to shutter speed and aperture. Most photography is now digital and provides a wider range of ISO settings than were available with film. However, this is not a free lunge as higher ISO settings come with more noise and less quality images. ISO and sensitivity to light. ISO is a term that originally derived from how rapidly 
a film's chemical components could react to light. Film speed. While film with an ISO 64 or 100 was suitable for shooting static images, films with higher ISO, e.g. 400 or 800, were needed when faster action was being shot and a more rapid sensitivity to light was necessary. While higher ISO values allow capture of faster movement, they are associated with somewhat lower image quality. For scuba photography, ISO 100 is a good starting point. ISO and Auto ISO setting. There is an Auto ISO setting on some cameras. Consider turning this off for scuba photography when using strobes, especially when shutter speed and aperture are being set manually. Color loss underwater. Water absorbs different light wavelengths to different degrees, with the longest wavelengths, the reds, having the lowest energy and therefore being absorbed first. The underwater distance causing a given color to disappear is 15 feet for red, 25 feet for orange, 40 feet for yellow, and 75 feet for green. Ultrabright strobe flashes can restore colors for underwater photography, otherwise they may have a bluish tint. Getting as close as possible to a subject helps to capture its color. White balance. The white balance setting determines what the color white looks like in specific lighting conditions, which in turn affects the hue of all other colors. Photos taken in fluorescent lighting may have a greenish hue, while pictures taken underwater may have a bluish tint. Many cameras have white balance presets for different shooting scenarios, such as sunny, cloudy, fluorescent lighting, tungsten lighting, flash, or underwater photography. Try auto white balance for scuba photography without strobes. White balance imbalance. There are two uh, photos below. The one on the left is the original as shot, showing the issue with a uh, white balance imbalance. The image on the right is after Photoshop corrected the imbalance uh, in the white balance, and the color looks more natural. White balance compensation settings. The diagram below demonstrates a, a variety of compensation settings available on some cameras. Uh, there's an auto white balance, there's custom, and uh, which allows you to set it precisely. You can set it by the, the temperature or the Kelvin of the light. There's compensations for tungsten and fluorescent lighting, for bright daylight, for use of flash on a cloudy day, or a shady day, and these can be of, of some value. White balance and color temperature. This slide illustrates the relationship between lighting source and color temperature. It can be seen that an electronic flash at the bottom has a Kelvin range of 5,000 to 5,500, whereas daylight on a clear day with a clear sky uh, ranges from 5,000 to 6,500 Kelvin. So in other words, an electronic flash can approximate uh, the lighting uh, temperature of a clear day with a clear sky. Most cameras have the following four modes of operation. Automatic, where the camera selects the aperture and the shutter speed. Aperture priority, where the operator sets the aperture and the camera selects the shutter speed. Shutter speed priority, where the operator sets the shutter speed and the camera selects the aperture. And manual, where the operator selects both aperture and the shutter speed. Automatic camera mode. In automatic mode, shutter speed and aperture are chosen by the camera. Newer cameras have a variety of automatic settings optimized for various shooting scenarios, such as landscape, portrait, macro, bright sun, hazy skies, flash, etc. Some cameras even have a setting for underwater photography, which is intended to compensate for color loss as one descends into the deep. However, strobes are the best way to capture vivid and accurate color underwater. Shutter Priority Camera Mode In Shutter Priority Mode, the operator sets the shutter speed and the camera sets what it calculates to be the best aperture. For scuba photography, a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second is a good starting point 
particularly in conjunction with the use of synchronized strobes. Faster shutter speeds of 1 250th of a second can be used for macro photography where the strobe is closer to the subject. Aperture Priority Camera Mode In Aperture Priority Mode, the operator sets the aperture and the camera sets what it calculates to be the best shutter speed. For scuba photography, an aperture f-stop of 8 provides reasonable depth of field. An f-stop number of 11 can also be considered in conjunction with the use of strobes. An f-stop of 5.6 or less provides poor depth of field, making it problematic to capture moving objects in a focused image, but may be intentionally used to improve bokeh, which is background blur. Aperture priority and bokeh. Bokeh is the Japanese word for blur. Bokeh is the visual quality of the out-of-focus areas of a photo image. Bokeh is good when the background of a picture is not distracting from the primary object of the picture. It is often achieved by using a low f-stop number and shallow depth of field. Here this yellow flower is very much in focus, the background is very pleasing, and it was achieved with an f-stop of 5.6. Manual Camera Mode in manual mode, the operator sets the aperture and the shutter speed. Once the operator sets the ISO, shots can be lightened or darkened by adjusting the exposure compensation settings. Remember that positive values lighten images and negative values darken them. If the images are still too dark after increasing exposure compensation settings, then ISO can be adjusted upward to brighten images. Strobes. A strobe is a device that releases a short but very bright burst of light, a flash, at the time a picture is taken. This requires the strobe to be synchronized to the camera by an electrical wire or a fiber optic cable connection. Some cameras modulate main flash intensity by delivering a small test flash or pre-flash prior to the main flash. This allows the camera to better calculate how much main flash energy is needed strobes, and minimizing backscatter. The phenomenon of backscatter occurs when light from a strobe is reflected off small particulate matter in the water, creating bright spots throughout the captured image. Greatest backscatter occurs when a strobe is positioned right next to the lens and is also worse when the subject is far away. To reduce backscatter, position the strobes far from the lens and orient them so that the subject is only illuminated with the edge of the light beams, that is, aim them straight ahead and slightly outward. Positioning of strobes. The optimal positioning of strobes varies with the type of photography being performed. For most photography, two strobes are superior to one, but macro photography can be performed with only one. In general, position the strobes higher than the camera lens and face them forward and slightly outward. For macro photography, Move the strobes closer to the camera. This slide depicts the CNC YS D2 strobe from a frontal view. At the center and the top is the targeting light. There's a white plastic cover or diffuser that diffuses the light beam. And in this case, it is the model 100 diffuser, which has a beam angle of 100 degrees horizontal by 100 degrees vertical and a guide number or brightness of 24. There's also a 120 model available which has a beam angle of 120 by 120 but a guide number of only 20. It's less intense but provides a wider beam. This slide shows a side view of the YSD2 strobe. You can see the main body, uh, the diffuser cap which snaps on and off is on the right and the mounting ball is on the bottom. This slide shows the rear view of the YSD2 and the controls which operate the function of this uh, strobe. On the bottom left is the mode selection switch. On the right is the strobe brightness control. In the center is the targeting light control. And at the very bottom is the ready lamp tells you when the strobe is ready to be fired. This slide uh, demonstrates the battery compartment of the YS-D2 strobe, uh, which takes four AA batteries, 
Uh, this provides approximately 150 flashes. Uh, the battery compartment also shows you the correct alignment of the batteries, uh, which are alkaline batteries. YSD2 strobe targeting light. The targeting light is used during night diving to target sea creatures for photography. Pressing the targeting light button turns on the full power. Pressing it again turns on low power. And pressing it a third time turns it off. It should be noted that the targeting light automatically turns off when the strobe is in use, so this illumination will not appear in your pictures. Again, the targeting light button is at the back on the bottom, and the uh, targeting light comes out through the front at the top of the diffuser. The YSD2 flash level dial allows control of the intensity of the flash. When manual flash settings are used, the flash intensity can be set to one of 11 guide number increments ranging from 1 to 32. Again, the guide number is the brightness of the strobe firing. When DSTTL is used, EV compensation from minus 2 to plus 2 can be selected in the following steps, uh, ranging from minus 2, minus 1, 5, minus 1, etc., on up to plus 1.5 and plus 2. Mid-range photography. Mid-range photography is at its best when the distance from the camera to the subject is in the range of 1 foot to 3 feet. With strobes and camera in manual mode, start with aperture f8, shutter speed 1 60th of a second, and ISO 100. If shooting subjects further away than 3 feet, open up the aperture to f6.3 or 5.6 to get more light from the subject since again, water blocks color. Position the strobes higher than the camera lens and face them forward to slightly outward. Macro photography. In manual mode, start with F8, shutter speed 1 250th of a second, ISO 100, and auto white balance. Zoom all the way out for best focusing and image quality. Keep the strobes pointed forward, but move them closer to the camera. When using just a single strobe, place it on the top. With a pair of strobes, place one on top of the camera and one on the side. This allows switching from a horizontal composition to a vertical composition while still having one strobe on the top and one on the side. Wide angle photography. In manual mode, using two strobes, start with f6.3, shutter speed 1 125th of a second, and ISO 100, uh, set the white balance to auto. Zoom out to capture as much of the scene as is possible and use a wide angle wet lens if available. If your image is too bright or too dark, adjust the shutter speed up or down accordingly or employ EV compensation. Position the strobes forward and wide, but this type of photography frequently involves camera to subject distances beyond the range where strobes provide useful illumination. This image is a shot using shutter speed priority to capture a brown pelican in flight. In this case, the shutter speed was set to 1 1250th of a second in order to freeze the bird in flight. And you can see there's a very good detail in the image and minimal blur. This slide is another example of the use of shutter speed priority. Uh, in this case, to freeze a roseate spoonbill in flight. Shutter speed here was 1 2500th of a second. This image is that of an IBIS in flight, and the shutter speed priority was used to freeze the motion. In this case, a uh, setting was 1 3200th of a second, uh, which is uh, less than a millisecond. This slide is an example where shutter speed priority was used to smooth out a waterfall by selecting a slow shutter speed. In this case, uh, one half of a second for the exposure, which of course requires a, a tripod. This image is taken of a fire, and shutter speed priority was used to smooth out the flames, as it were. Uh, the shutter speed selected in this case was uh, 1.6 seconds. This image depicts uh, a flowing river with uh, shutter speed priority used to smooth out the water flow. In this case, the shutter speed was one second, and again, this type of uh, shooting requires a tripod. Aperture priority and bouquet. 
Bokeh is the Japanese word for blur. Bokeh is the visual quality of the out-of-focus areas of a photo image. Bokeh is good when the background of a picture is not distracting from the primary object of the picture. It is often achieved by using a low f-stop number and shallow depth of field. Here this yellow flower is very much in focus. The background is very pleasing and it was achieved with an f-stop of 5.6. This slide uh, shows an image taken of an ibis with the use of aperture priority, uh, in this case f4, to achieve a shallow depth of field so that only the image in the foreground is in focus. Aperture Priority. In this case, an aperture f-stop of f4 was chosen to create a shallow depth of field to emphasize the colorful flower in the foreground but de-emphasize the background.